Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of the Genomic Variant Analysis and Clinical Interpretation course. Today we'll be looking at one example copy number variant and we'll try to annotate it using the guidelines that we've already studied in the previous, previous session that are used to annotate copy number variants and are given by ACMG AMP and in joint con consensus with the ClinGen resource. So let's begin. So today we'll be looking at a 440 KB approximate deletion, which was referred in a three-year-old female. And the clinical symptoms of the female were postnatal growth deficiency. She had a ventricular septal defect, scoliosis, hand anomalies, hearing loss, paniofacial dysmorphism. And it was also known that the CNV is a maternally inherited CNV. So the initial step or the first step when we have a CNV in our hand is to assess it for its genomic content that is given by section 1A and 1B. So just to recall, there are five sections in the uh, clinical um, guidelines that are issued. And we looked at each of the sections in detail in the previous session. So we will begin with section one. So that is to look for protein coding genes or other important uh, known functional elements within the CNV. So to do this, we will take in our uh, chromosome X coordinates that are uh, that we know that our CNV has, and we will go to the UCSC web browser. So if I just now go to the UCSC web browser. Uh, you can see that in this particular search tab is the place where we will enter uh, the chromosome X followed by a colon and followed by our coordinates of interest. And when we click on go, we will see a uh, screen something like this. Now, there might be some tabs which you might not be able to see when you uh, try doing it yourself. That is only because they are hidden uh, as default in the UCSC web browser. And if you go below, scroll below in the UCSC web browser, you will reach a tab which is phenotype and literature. From that, just click on the dense options by clicking on the ClinGen and the ClinGen CNVs instead of the default hide that would have been present in the UCSC web browser and also click on dense in the OMM genes. Also, uh, you have to go below and now select for the uh, DGV structural vari variant uh, tab also to be visible in the UCSC web browser because these are the things that we will, we will need to evaluate our CNV for. So once we do that, we, uh, we have to click on the refresh page of the UCSC web browser and only then those tabs will be visible to you. So I've already done that. And uh, if we see that in our CNV of interest, there is only one protein coding gene that is PTCHD1, which is given by the RefSec uh, curated gene list from NCBI. Then if we also look at the OMIM gene phenotypes, we can see that our CNV is a disease-causing uh, CNV with respect to OMIM gene phenotype. And we also see that it is uh, that it overlaps with the uh, ClinGen dosage sensitivity uh, map, which is given by ClinGen. Also, if we do look at the DGV uh, data that is given by the DGV uh, track, we will see that um, it is uh, really, the, it, so basically our CNV does not really represent common variation. While there are a few variations that are present in the uh, region, they do not really intersect with the coding material. So uh, this tells us that this is not a really common variation according to the population scale database of DGV. So we can go back and continue our evaluation. So uh, here we do consider 1A because it does contain protein coding. Uh, genes. So now if we go further, so just to recall, what we did see in the previous UCSC browser was that we saw that it contains one protein coding gene. We saw that it overlaps with the ClinGen dosage sensitivity map. And it also has an OMM gene phenotype, which is disease causing. And in the DGV uh, population scale database level, we see that it does not represent common variation. So now, um, what we have to do is after this is that we have to go back to our uh, browser and look for uh, the this particular region in the ClinGen dosage sensitivity maps uh, maps page. So when we do that, 
we will go back and look at the Clinton Rosette Sensitivity Curation page and submit our uh, location by the coordinates that we had already seen. And once we do that, we will be re redirected to this particular page where we can see that there are three genes that are present within the region. So this is also uh, important to evaluate for our uh, section 3A, but we need to know that the protein coding gene is only one. This is, an, this is an antisense gene of the protein coding gene, and this is a predicted gene. Hence, this particular gene was not visible to us when we were looking at the UCSC web browser, and we were looking at the RefSec uh, curated track. So since this is a predicted gene, it was not visible in the UCSC track browser. So now that we know that there is one protein coding gene, and it has a curation status com that says complete by the Clingen dosage sensitivity group uh, we will uh, go go to its further details so to go to its further details we need to click on the iska id that is towards the right most hyperlink and once we click on that link we will be uh, directed to this page where it says where it says so much more information about the gene so we know that the gene is ppc hd1 and it says that the curation status is complete and it was last evaluated in 2018 and uh, if we go below, and if uh, so, we are looking at the deletion. So we will look at the Clinton haploinsufficiency score, and we know that the score is three. Now, if we go go to this tab and look for the evidence for haploinsufficiency phenotypes, we see that there are a number of studies that are uh, seen. Now, uh, first important thing is to understand uh, to which disease is this CNV linked to. So uh, the Clinton dosage sensitivity map page also redirects us to the OMIM um, uh, page by giving us the OMIM link of the disease. So once we go to the OMIM page and if we look at the clinical synopsis of this particular um, gene and its disorder, we will see that it's an X-linked recessive gene. So now uh, saying that it's an X-linked recessive gene, uh, uh, we we now understand that this will lead to more evident phenotypes in the males versus the females. So females will have less evident phenotypes with respect to this disorder because it's an excellent processive disorder. And um, if we further go down and look at the clinical features, we see that it, the clinical features are more towards the neurological and the intellectual disability phenotype, whereas the uh, referral example that we were studying uh, consisted of much more um, clinical phenotype than just the neurological phenotypes. So uh, if we go back to the Clinton dosage sensitivity map and uh, see further, one important point to note is this particular box that is towards the bottom page of the Clinton dosage sensitivity page. And it says that the loss of function and triplo sensitivity ratings for genes on the X chromosome are made in context of a male genome to account for the effects of hemizygous or nullizygous deletions. Only in cases where male lethality uh, could be present, these um, are done, are taken into account the phenotype with respect to female individuals. So we need to remember that whatever we're looking at, it could be present in a male individual or a female individual. However, we need to evaluate it with respect to considering any of the individual and it doesn't really matter for us. So now that we know that uh, uh, it is related to autism and it is an X-linked disorder. Uh, we will look into the literature. Uh, we will look into the literature to gather much more evidences to support the haploinsufficiency phenotype. So we will not have time to look into each of the study that was done, but. One important study that is present in this particular example is by Chaudhary et al. in 2015. Uh, so if we look at this particular study in detail, we will be able to uh, look at this, that uh, uh, in this particular study, there were 23 individuals which were uh, studied and uh, they, had, um, they had truncating mutations or deletions uh, with respect to the X-linked PPCHT1 gene. And uh, they did notice that the PPCHT1 disruptions in males are associated with a neurodevelopmental phenotype of varying severity with the prominence of autism spectrum disorder and other behavioral characteristics. But uh, what they uh, do comment upon is that more studies are needed in females to clarify whether carrier status and X inactivation pattern may have any subtle effects on the phenotype or not. And if we look at more details, we 
see that there was one only one female subject present in this entire study which did um, show the deletion that was present um, which is our uh, region of interest also and they the authors did comment that the single female subject in our study k1 uh, they represent the uh, subject as k1 has a history of speech delay and a subsequent diagnosis of high functioning autism spectrum disorder and her unaffected mother also carried the ptchd1 deletion and they do say that while x inactivation studies in mother and daughter were done but they were uninformative and thus they cannot they could not rule out the subtle neurodevelopmental phenotype in carrier females and they say that more in depth studies are needed so this is an important piece of evidence that we need to keep in mind and also we need to keep in mind that the earlier uh, studies that we did look at uh, the other male uh, people's deletions that we did look at the uh, the figure uh, highlights a certain overlap of pink color shaded region that is the region that we are looking at so it is important to note that uh, the a lot of the deletions did overlap with the already known deletions in this particular piece of literature so this was uh, this was an important study and it did tell us that uh, this particular female um, did con did have the region of interest that we were looking at but uh, they could not uh, clearly rule out the subtle neurodevelopmental phenotype in the female so uh, to look at the complete uh, classification that we have done till now we see that uh, we saw that um, in uh, in the 1a uh, region where we did see that it did contain protein coding genes we saw that uh, there was there was a protein coding gene and hence we gave it uh, a score of 0 and uh, then we gave it a score of 1 because it overlapped with the dosage sensitivity map and uh, that was corresponding to section 2a so till now we have scored a uh, section 1 and section 2 when we looked at section 3 we did see that there was one protein coding gene and so we gave a score of 0 corresponding to uh, the attributes are told that 0 to 24 genes will give get a score of 0 so we scored 0 because we had only one protein coding gene in section uh, 3a then when we moved on to section 2h we saw that there were a uh, certain predictors of hi because we had one particular uh, gene that was predicted so there were certain case control data as well uh, in the 4l section so uh, the um, authors uh, sorry the clingen resource group has uh, done certain modifications for x linked genes and have combined these two h and 4l scores and have given a score of 0.1 uh, then moving on to the 4c section we did see individual case evidences and there were more than 10 cases so the guidelines say that we have to assign 0.1 uh, points for each and since there were more uh, than 10 cases we have given it a score of 0.9 then uh, coming to the final section that was 5b where we saw that there was a maternal inheritance but the maternal um, inheritance maternal uh, parent did not show any phenotype so she was unaffected and the proband was uh, having a specific phenotype so we did give it a score of 0 now there could be uh, users who could just assign uh, assign 1a and uh, 2a and call it a final score but if we do go through the entire scoring metric we again will eventually land up with a total score of 1 that is 0.9 and 0.1 if we go back to the other scoring matrices and um, if we do remember that if we have a total score of 0.99 or more the proposed interpretation is pathogenic so the final classification of this particular variant would also be pathogenic and this is how we do a uh, navigate to each step so the first most step was going to the ucsc browser putting in our in our coordinates and looking for the clingen overlap looking for omem overlap looking for dgb um allele frequency overlaps with the already known cnds then going back to the dosage sensitivity individual page of the clingen website and looking for the literature evidences to either support our haploinsufficiency or triplo sensitivity and then uh, looking at uh, the disease uh phenotype in the literature as well as comparing it with your uh, case that you are studying and then uh, finally 
calculating all the scores you would total your score and then give it look into this particular table and then um, classify the variant as either pathogenic likely pathogenic uncertain significance likely benign or benign so this is how we go about doing uh, acng classifications for cnvs and this is one example that we saw if there are any doubts or any uh, confusions in this particular case you could always write back to us and we'll be happy to help and i hope the session was helpful and you could get a sense of uh, how do we go about doing um, um, acmg classifications for cnvs as well uh, so we will be giving out a few sort uh, example um, cases and a few um, cases for you to try it yourself Uh, and uh, i hope there would not be any more uh, doubts but if there are do please write to us and we'll be happy to get back to you so thank you for attending and i really hope this was useful